Hello, <laughs> I'm Candy Michael from Powell, Ohio, and thanks for joining me on my live today. I am very excited and dressed in a little bit of plaid. I hope you like it to match my designer paper in the background here that I'll be working with today. I am very, very excited to show you an advent calendar with a little twist on it. Um, one that will be for your favorite cook or chef in the kitchen and the other for all of you that are pet lovers, dogs, cats, pretty much are what I have using our designer paper. Um, but really you can use it for any of your pets. So come on over and let me show you what I made and then I'm gonna bring it down to the table so that you guys can get a better look. Hi Tess, thanks everyone for joining me. Here I'm gonna move myself out of the way. I'm not sure if that's showing backwards or not. But this is my fun advent calendar. And I'm just gonna show you how I did, how I made all of these and put them together. They're little, we call them sour cream containers. Whoops, getting a little close. Isn't that fun? I'm so excited to show you guys. Hi, Deb. Okay, so let me bring my camera back over to the table and flip you around so you can see what's happening. I hope you love my earrings. They're so much fun. <laughs> All right, here we go. Flip the camera, put it down below, and I'll walk you through exactly what I did. Hello from Maine, Linda. Thanks for joining today. And Dina from Texas. Hello, hello, you guys. This is gonna be really fun. Okay, let me get my camera adjusted here and make sure everything's in. So this particular advent calendar, and I'll bring it back over in a minute. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you today. And Jean, Lisa, thanks, you guys. So I'm going to be using our Stampin' Up! What's Cooking bundle. And I'll tell you what, if you don't have this bundle, it is so much fun, so much fun to play with. And I when I first saw it, when it came out, I had to have it. It's on, it's in the annual catalog on page 34. And um, I'm telling you guys, it is so much fun. I felt like play, like when I was back playing with my Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> so let me show you what I did. Stamping Up has host rewards when you are, when you have a party and or when you maybe put in your own order of over $150. <laughs> but you can earn a host reward or several host rewards, depending on the amount that you put in. And one of the host rewards this time in our annual catalog is this awesome paper pack that I don't even remember how many sheets are in it, but this is one of the sheets that comes with it. And when I saw this, and I've seen several people post pictures of their cards made with this particular design of the designer paper, I thought, oh my God, I really want to do this advent calendar because today I'm kicking off my holiday themed projects all the way through till December 22nd. So everything will be themed towards the holidays for maybe a quick last minute um, gift idea and that, um, that sorts. So let me pull down my little advent calendar. I'm going to be using the black and white gingham ribbon. This is so cute. You can use this with a lot of things. And if you saw my live last week, you can color on it, which no problem. I'm going to be doing that again this time. I have a website, candystampers.com. This is my November host code. So if you'd like to place an order and get your free designer series paper, if you place over $150 order, then I'm your girl, I can help you out. So let me pull this um, advent calendar down so you can get an up close look. But these are the pieces that I've already cut and that I will be using. So I'm gonna set those aside. All right. I am thrilled with how this came out. And again, I will walk you through how I did some of my fun little things here. So these particular containers are called a sour cream container because there's a fast food restaurant that gives you sour cream for your baked potato and they kind of come packaged like this. But also when I was in Hawaii, the macadamia nut packages come packaged like this too. So you can call it whichever one you'd like. So let me bring back these dies and show you 
Where did I set them? I hid them under my paper. But I'm going to show you the cute little um, cutting board right here. It's actually pretty big. So this is the little tag that I made to start off my advent calendar because I wanted one um, to go in several different places. So I made three of them. So just for show, I made a total of six. You could make six days of Christmas or holidays. You could make 12. You can make 24. It's totally up to you. But just to show you, I only did six to make it easier because, well, it doesn't all show in the camera anyway. Hello, Linda. Okay, so let me walk you through and show you how I made this tag first. And then I will show you how I made the little containers because it's just, like I said, stinking cute. So I made, let me show you this. The three tags I made are different. I'll bring it back over here. And just, they were just fun. You can do it any way you want. And this was kind of what I started playing with. So I'm going to show you how I did the knife and the other little pieces here. Hopefully I die cut them all out. And uh, I'm laughing because I, oopsie, I cleaned up earlier and put my red ink pad away, but I had it on the table for a reason. Okay, I've already die cut out my little, um, let me move these up. I've already die cut out my wooden cutting board and you'll see it actually has a nice little um, like dimension already on it. It's very cute. I took my crumb cake cardstock, cardstock and ink and then what I'm going to do is drag this across. Of course, I don't have my paper here. So I'm gonna drag my ink pad across this die cut piece that I already have here. And this is actually one of the older pads, so I need to make sure I use this side of it and not down here. But I'm literally just going to tip it and drag it. Ooh, that one came out a little darker. I like it. And then drag the top. So you might get that little line. It's all right. It's it's art. That's what I call it, art. Right, Dina? Don't you just tell me, just, just go for it, just do it. So I am. Okay, I have another piece of paper here. So you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So my little knife, I die cut out of the black. And then I also did the little spatula. Well, it's not little, it's actually pretty long. And then I used our silver foil. And with this, I also used, I did it right before I went live. I had actually already die cut it. And I said, no, I'm gonna use the adhesive sheets. And if you have not used these adhesive sheets, Oh my gosh, they will make your life so much easier. So all you do is get your whatever color cardstock you want and you're gonna put the um, sticky adhesive sheet on the back. And then when you run your dies through, when you have small pieces like this, you don't have to always put the glue on there because it has it on here. So for this one, I'm going to cut down, this is just gonna show you how I did my little tag because I thought this was adorable. So I cut it down and then I have, I hope I grabbed the right one. Yes, that would be really funny if I didn't. But I'm just pulling that little adhesive piece off and now this will stick right to where I want it to go. When you're working with these fine little pieces, it makes it so much easier. So I took my, see which side is right side up. I took my little die cut piece here and I'm going to just match this up. And now it looks like it has a metal piece on it. And it has the little handle. Isn't that cute? Going to do the same thing with the knife. But I will cut this down just a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Dina. I know you've taught me a lot. Just when it comes to doing all of this fun art... I just call it crafting, but when it comes to crafting, I should say, you really do just have to go with it. And that's what Dina just tells me all the time, just do it. it. Doesn't matter what it looks like, just go for it. So you're just going to line this up, just a fun way to make it look like you have 
a nice sharp blade on there. So on this tag, I also die cut the little beater, but I forgot to for my live, so I'm not going to run over and do that to make you wait. I can use one in black, how's that? So all I did, glued this down, super fun, super easy. Please tell me I brought my glue. Yes, I have my glue. And I am going to go ahead and just glue this on. Ooh, that's a lot of glue. That right there is a lot of glue. So I will just do a little transfer and hopefully this will all be fine. So we're just going to decorate this little guy. Oops, I want that to be up a little bit higher. That is a long, long blade. Super adorable. And then I didn't think about it, but I should have put the adhesive backing on this as well because it would have made it much easier to glue this on. But because I didn't think about it, we're going to go the old-fashioned way and just put it on here. So I have to watch because part of this um, flipper is, I don't even know what is this actually called. I call it a spatula, but I don't think that's correct. Anybody know what it's called? <laughs> Sandy, do you know? I see you're watching. Do you know? Okay, so this is just going to come across here. And that's why I wanted to watch that I didn't put too much glue on it. It, it You know, this is just wherever you want it. Go up right about there because I already started. And then what was really fun on this tag, I think you can see it. Yeah, it's in the camera. I took our linen thread. And I'm going to be using some blends today to do some more coloring. I did last week. If you missed that, there were some fun little tips on there. But I'm going to take about six inches of ribbon, well, twine, linen thread, whatever you want to call it. And I am going to color it red because I needed a red piece. Oh, my goodness. It keeps rolling away from me. I needed a red piece. So I'm going to go ahead and just color this red using my dark real red Stampin' Blends. These are an alcohol-based marker and I love them. They are so awesome. So let me move this out of the way for a quick second and I'll do it on my darker. So I'm just going to literally try to hold this. I feel like it's like a moving critter and you're just going to brush this over the top. It will get a little bit wet, but it actually dries very quickly. And if you can kind of roll it like I'm doing, then you're going to have the whole thing colored. Super cool, super easy to do. If you have our blends, you can make any color linen thread that you might need for a project. I love, love that idea doesn't have to be perfect that's good enough so I did get some on me but I'm okay I'm okay with that okay so if you need it to dry faster just wave it la 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 sing you could sing a little song but that's fine it might be a little wet but we're doing this okay so I'm just gonna tie a quick little bow and if I can't pull that through there we go so when I do this, I kind of make it big, make it small, and then tighten it up. Tighten all the sides up. My fingers are a little red, but that's okay because that's my color theme here, black, white, and red, <laughs> even the fingers. So I'll bring this back in and you're going to see that all I did was put a little glue dot and I glue dot that on. How fun and cool is that? So the glue dots, what I normally will do is I will take my glue dot. Let me get my little pick a tool here. And I'll pull it off of here and then kind of roll it up in a little ball just to make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to just put that right where I want my piece to go. That looks like a good spot. So the fun thing about this is you can take all of these fun little spatulas and knives and you can create your own little tags with them. Super, super adorable. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece that's probably about 
six inches, five, six inches. It really doesn't need to be that long, but we're going to tie this across the top and just pull it through and then loop it around so you have that cute little knot hanging off. Okay, and then we'll trim that down. Cute. And then lastly, I need to do my stamping. So I have, I'm going to use the words for you and my little stamp set. And then I'm just going to fussy cut it out. So we'll do this here. Stamp it there. And it doesn't matter that I caught an edge, although that usually bothers me. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm over it. Because I'm going to cut it out, so it won't matter. So let me put this underneath here for now. Okay, hopefully this is dry. I have many other pieces that I cut out, but I just wanted to give you the idea of what I did to make this tag. All of them are a little bit different, super fun. Here's another one. I can slide in the camera there. I'll bring them back in a minute too. Okay, so we're just gonna do a very quick fussy cut. And those of you that know me, I don't normally like to do fussy cutting, but if you've never heard that term, this is what fussy cutting is. It's using your scissors and doing it, the cutting without a die. We're so spoiled having all of our dies and punches that we're going back to the good old days. And I know many of you love doing this. You find it therapeutic. I don't, <laughs> but I did it. Okay, and then I'm gonna use some of our mini dimensionals and pop this up. So this was just a very simplistic, if you hadn't seen it before, fun way to make a little tag. Oops, ran out of those tiny ones. So I'll just cut a piece off of here and put that on. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you how to make these fun little um, sour cream containers. There we go. And then we're gonna just pop this up here, like so. Did I take that off? I did. And there's one of your little tags that is stinking adorable. Super cute, super cute. So that's where you can add them wherever you want. Again, I made three different ones to show you because I thought they were cute. Happiness is homemade. Again, the one that says for you. And then what's cooking. Thanks, Penny. Okay, so now for the fun part. Well, it's all fun, but more fun parts. How's that? I'm going to show you how to make one of these little containers. If you've not made one before, they are really fun and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So I used, again, I'm gonna bring it back. I used a 12 by 12 sheet of our designer series paper. And because it's 12 by 12, I didn't wanna waste any of it. So I made my containers, my sour cream containers, I made at four inches by, I'm sorry, six inches by four inches. So each one, again, is six inches long, by four inches and that way I got six out of one sheet of paper. So you could make them six by six and they'll be a bigger container depending on what it is you wanna put in them. So I went ahead and left these two so I can show you exactly what we're gonna do. So this is really fun because I get to use my name in this little project. So when, when you are putting these together, you want to make sure that you are using your tear tape, terrible tape, which again is something I love to use. Let me do one at a time. So I'm using my terrible tape on the side I don't want showing, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and eyeball and measure that out. I'm going to bring this down as low, as low as I can go, <laughs> to the bottom of the edge here, because that will give me more space in between for my my goodies that are going to go in here. So here's the fun part that I get to show you. Well, I'll do this other, I'll do the top one and then I'll tell you one way that you can remember how to do this. And it'll be my little tip from Candy. 
Okay, remember that. Oops, that one's crooked, that's all right. So what I'm doing here, and I do want that covered on the corner, so I'm going to bring this over here in my tool because I do want this tape all the way to the edge. So this paper does not have a direction, which I'll, on my next project I'll show you does have a direction. So it really doesn't matter which side I put the tape on. But what is very important and that you're going to remember this because my name is Candy, you want the inside tape to be the letter C as in candy. <laughs> and I cut that a little short too. So here you're going to see the letter C for candy. See right here, the letter C. That's what you want to remember when you're making these sour cream containers. Not an O, no O's or everything that's in your container will stick to it. So you want to have a C. Only three sides are going to be covered. Okay, so that's my little, my little fun fact. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. All right, so now we're gonna take this off and it's so much easier if you use your tool to pull off your paper. It really, really helps. I have uh, fingernails that I just can never get underneath and sometimes it wants to take all of the tape off. So here's my tip. I'm gonna put this over to my right side, whichever side, it doesn't matter. This side has no glue on it. So, or tape or anything. So this is my inside piece. This piece has tape on it, so it's going to overlap. So when you use designer paper or cardstock, you can kind of make this a little more flexible and bend it so it works for you. Don't be afraid to bend it because we're going to eventually do that. So you know the tape is about like a quarter inch size. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. And the coolest thing with this paper is it gives me a line to work with, which was really nice when I was pre-making these. So I'm just going to bring it over here, try to get it straight, and then press, press it down. So my inside will have no tape, so my things won't stick to it, just that outside part. Now I like to take my seam and kind of push it over to the side a little bit, and I'm going to just squeeze this down. So now that I've sealed that, you definitely want to use your bone folder and go over it because you want to make sure that that has a super good seal on it. Okay, now we need to put something fun in here. So for our chef or favorite cook in the house, how about we add a little thing of mini Tabasco sauce? Isn't that cute? But it can't just be any Tabasco sauce. Where did I put that roll of ribbon? Aha. We have to tie a little ribbon on it because I just think that is so stinking cute. So I'm just gonna cut a little piece off and tie a little knot because it'll be so cute. And it's actually going to fit in here because I already have one in the other one in my sample. So I'm going to just tie a little knot. Make sure you make your ribbon long enough because I almost didn't. Oh, come on. got away. We'll do it again. If not, I'll just leave it. Oh, there it is. Ha, huh, come back. Yay. <laughs> I got it. And then you can drop this right into your cute little container. All right, fixing that. Let me let me clip off my little end pieces here. Make them even. Look how adorable that is. A little Tabasco sauce for your chef. And the cool thing is, is it fits right inside our little container. So you can kind of push it over to the corner and make it lay down a little bit. And then what you're going to do on this side, this, this one goes this direction. So this one will go the opposite direction, which is like, oops, it's stuck in there, which is like this. So you just do one one way and one the other. See, so you have one this way and one this way. Super adorable. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you 
how I covered and did the front. So I have a little um, bowl, the mixing bowl that's in our stamp set, and I've already stamped it and die cut it out. And so what I'm going to do next is just add the numbers to it. But just so you know, I've already die cut all of these and I do have the adhesive on the back of all of my numbers to make it easy. And I'm not necessarily going to decorate each one, but I am gonna show you what I have in all of them because I found some super cute ideas for your favorite chef. And I actually was, I'm here in the Powell, Ohio area near Columbus. And we have a market called World Market. And this was just one that I happened to go into and they had a lot of fun. This is where I found these, all these things that I'm gonna put in here, this is where I found it. Okay, so I'm just going to add my number one. I'm going to add some dimensionals on the back. Oh, my big, I took my big dimensionals away. Hey, I'll just use a whole new sheet. I like new. And then I'm just going to put a one dimensional on the back, super easy. And then it doesn't matter, there is a seam though, so I'm gonna to try to hide that seam. And I'm going to pop this right there. And then I'm going to add, I cut a bunch of these out ahead of time. So I'm just going to add like a little whisk. This one has, well, we'll do the same as the other one. And then I'll move all these little dudes out of the way and drop them on the floor. <laughs> and then this, is going to just get glued right underneath there. Okay, you guys following me? Isn't that fun? And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna pop this up. I did put a dimensional on the back of it and it's going to hide. It will hide behind the um, bowl. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make it hide. I hope it hides. Okay, it's hiding. <laughs> there we go. So now I have my little spatula and you could have pulled it up higher, but any which way you want. And then last thing that I did on here was I created a little template. So it was just much easier and, and I could see it's not perfect, but I have an idea of how it's gonna work. And this will help me to mark, except for I made it too wide there, too long. But it's going to help me to mark where I want my holes and just making life a little bit easier. So I'm going to do it on the back because if I mess it up, and I should have probably cut it to the correct size of the width here, but I just wanted to do it to give you guys a quick idea. I will use my pencil, do a quick little mark, quick little mark, and if they're not perfect, it's fine. I'm okay with that. And then we're just going to punch them out and I will not do this on each one, but I just wanna show you what I did to complete everything. And I do think I had a bigger hole punch, but I must've left it on the other table. Yeah, it's crooked, but you get the idea. <laughs> okay, and I think I did them a little closer to get her on the other one. But at least you see what it was I put together here. Okay, I am just falling apart. Let me move this out of the way. All right, so the next, so now that that's done, we would just move on and you would do each one of those any way you want. I just started playing with all the different little pieces, did the spoon, did the rolling pin, again, the little whisk, and the spatula again at the end. So isn't that adorable? Okay, let me show you how to do that one more time and then I'm just gonna show you guys what I put inside now that I have them all twisted. Okay, so I took and I put my tape on. I already did this. I'm a messy crafter. I really am. And I will be the first to admit it. <laughs> so I took my paper. I already added my tape to the letter at like the letter C because I want to make sure that you guys remember it's candy and that you might put candy inside these little containers. Um, besides, that's my name. That's a good way to remember, the letter C, not the letter O, the letter C. And then again, we're just going to take the tape part. I found when I was doing these that it worked best for me to come this way. It might be different if you're left-handed and or if you just see it differently. Just pull it together 
go ahead and walk it through. Take that um, seam, I like to kind of hide that off to the side. And then press your bottom together, bottom of the paper. Make sure you run this across it because you wanna make sure it's nice and tight. And then in this one, I found some chocolate. There's a cute little snowman, chocolate snowman. So I put a cute little chocolate snowman in there and we're gonna tuck that snowman away and then bring that together. And again, you have another one of your containers. Yay. Okay, for my next container, I have it magically already done. And this one, I'm hoping it fits. I'm hoping it fits. It was a little bit taller, but I found this darling little spices in the store in the world market, and it might be a little tall, so we'll see if it works or not. It may not. I can't remember. I know I had tried earlier with it, but I'm going to make it work. So it's sitting in there. I could have tied a little bow, but I'm going to just see if I can force this in there. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it'll work. Maybe I really munched that one. So you want to make sure your pieces are the right size. But I'm going to leave this one and give it to Joe because he that's his favorite spice. And he probably wouldn't even notice that that was all crunched. So make sure your, your pieces that go in are the right size. You can actually measure. Um, I eyeballed some stuff just to see what it was. And then I'm going to just show you what other things I put inside. So over there at that store, they had these fun chocolates. These will fit. You could put as many as you want in, in one of them. And I did. And I might have started eating some of them last night. And I thought to myself, self you better stop eating those or you're not going to have any left for your life. <laughs> so when you put your chocolate in here, yes, it's true. I only ate a few, a, a couple, maybe a few. But when you put your stuff in, you want to be mindful that there is tape across the top. So be careful not to get it stuck on there. Hello, Ida. <laughs> he likes the candy. I figured Colton would like the candy. I'm with you, Colton. I like the candy too. So then you're going to go ahead and do the opposite squeeze there. Colton, this one's for you. It has chocolate in it. Just because you gave a shout out. And I'll see Ida on Friday. So you're taking this one to Colton. So there's some chocolates. And then there's also these other darling little chocolates. Let me just show you what I have. Look at these, how cute. Are those not just the most adorable thing you've ever seen? And those will fit in there. I know at least two is what I put in one of them. And I, you might even be able to get three. Unless you eat some of them. Then you're not going to have any left. Oh, this one didn't come out there. It's so cute. Look at that one. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Hello, Beth. Welcome. So those are some really fun, fun, fun ideas of what you can put together. Um on your uh, advent calendar. And again, you could do it for, you know, six days. You could do it for 12 days. You could do it for the whole month. And then lastly for this, what I want to show you is I took the clothespins. And if you notice, let me see if I can bring it back in here. Slide these down. I colored them. I actually colored both sides. I colored red and black because I couldn't decide. Oh, you just stay right there. I couldn't decide what I wanted. So I ended up doing every other one a different color and just because I could something different. And you guys, super easy coloring. All I did was take my um, blends and just brushed it. And on the red, I did go over it and the black. I think I went over it twice or a couple times because it's kind of a light lighter, you know, when you do it on the wood, it's a little bit lighter, but this is how easy that is. Just a couple little brush strokes of your blend. And look at that. You don't even have to paint it. And it just takes a second to dry. Isn't that a fun little tip? So I hope you love this advent calendar. I have another one I want to show you, 
but I hope you love my little advent calendar idea for your favorite chef. And of course, you could make this with any designer paper for whether it's like snowflakes or for Hanukkah. You could do it for um, birthdays. You could do it for just any countdown for any special event that's coming. It's just really, it's a calendar countdown for any special event that we have coming up. You could even do a really cute one for Valentine's Day. Wouldn't that be fun? But birthday ones, I think, would be really cool. I did weave in my ribbon. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I colored my ribbon. Did any of you notice that? And my other tip, um, this gingham ribbon, I love it. I cut my ribbon at 56 inches, and that was to cover my six. But that was giving them a little bit of space in between. So if you want to do just six and you're doing the um, six by four paper, 56 inches is what I used to get six of them. And then I took my blend and I colored with the brush side and I did color. That's why you'll see the color on here and just colored the one side. And I did that all the way down to the end. So I hope you guys love that idea. I have another one I wanna show you. Hello, Debbie Blake. And then I'll show you how I tied off the ends and got my loops. So let me move this back to its hanging position so I get it off of my table. And then I can show you again at the very end what it looks like. All right. Yay, I'm so excited about this. Oh my gosh, the ideas that I have for you guys coming up is I just want to just want to explode because there's so many fun things, so many fun things you can do. During the holidays, I'm not just talking about today's um, projects. I'm talking about in general throughout the holidays. My mind is spinning as to what I'm going to do next week. Okay, so the terrible tape is definitely a must. Your bone folder is a must. And your piercing tool is a must. And of course, you're going to need um, any of your glue and your scissors for um, this next project as well. But I just wanted to let you know exactly what I had here. Okay, hopefully I brought over. I did, I did, I did. Okay, so the next one is for our favorite pet. Look how cute. Our sweet little stocking set and dies is really adorable. We have dies that'll cut out um, a lot of the different designs on here and of course the greetings, but also the dies match some of our designer paper cutouts. And I'll show you what I've done for you. I've, I've already pre-done it and I'm not going to make it, but I'll give you an idea of what I did. So drum roll, please. Do we have a drum roll? And I just have to say, and I love saying it, but this, and not just because I made it, I'm not bragging. This paper and everything is stinking cute and you just cannot have anything but cuteness with this. Okay, are we ready? So it's another advent calendar, countdown to fun, and it's for any pet lovers. Stamping Up has the cutest designer paper for our pets and it's, cats, dogs, there's even a little mouse on here. So I cut out a lot of the designer paper. This I just fussy cut, and then I use this punch. There's the shape. I use this punch, and I will tell you the name of that in one minute, but I have to bring this out and show you. So I die cut out, stamped and die cut out his little face, and this looks like my son's dog, Bane. Looks adorable, just like Bane, and Bane is sporting the little Santa cap. Oh, darn it. I had the little white puffy ball there. I wanted to pom-pom I wanted to put on, and I forgot to glue it on. And then we have this cute little gray kitty cat. So this, this stocking die, I didn't realize I put them both together. The stocking die cut these out of our designer paper. This paper, you guys, is so cute. I have to grab it, and I think I have a full sheet. So you can see what, what some of these designs look like. So there's a full sheet of these stockings. Well, that's a piece that's cut up. 
there's a full sheet of these stockings and there's quite a few different colors. So I just die cut out because Stampin' Up! made it so the stockings fit this paper. So you can die cut them all out and just use them. And then as you see, as I go on, I fussy cut like the cat and the dog on another one. But I also used on this little one here with this doggy, little corgi, I used the piece that was at the bottom. Sometimes we look at it and we go, oh, he doesn't have any legs. But it's okay <laughs> that he doesn't have his legs because he still looks sticky cute on here. And then the little kitty cat that's on the... Um, in the box there. So all of this designer paper is how I designed these little parts and pieces. I fussy cut this out with the little fish bowl. And then this looks like Anthony's dog, Annie. Anthony and Sam's dog, Annie. Now, one thing I wanted you guys to note is even though I have cats and dogs, I really have these bone, milk bones inside. <laughs> Thanks, Mindy. I have these milk bones. Oh, and thank you for the milk bones because these were a few that you had left over so that you had given me. Thank you so much. So when I first did the first one, which I think was this one, it was actually a little bit too long. And if you notice, I did not make this like the sour cream container. Because I was using the milk bone and it was longer, I needed that little extra space. You could even do that with that spice thing that I messed up. But all of these I made are flat. And then because I was fussing, like trying to make this fit, I just snapped them all in half and stuck them in there. <laughs> so most of these are cut in half. There was just one that was really giving me a bad time, the very first one. And I thought, well, I can just break it in half and, and put it in because there's no right or wrong to this. But you can fill it with some of your favorite pets snacks and then in the very center it says Santa Paws is coming to town <laughs> one of the cutest stamp sets that Stampin' Up! has made anything for the pets we love 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 you're gonna note that on this one I did not use any of the clothespins and I um I did do it the same way so I'll show you really quickly I have one more piece of paper as to how I folded that and just pressed it down. I'll use it back with my gingham piece here. I just had my tape. Oh, here it is. Um, what do you guys think? Do you love it? I think these are so fun. And I, you know, I wish, wish, wish there were more hours in a day because I was going to, my mind was that, oops, I was going to come up with so many more advent calendars. But, and like I said, just countdown calendars really is what we can call them. Oh, I hope I don't tear that. There we go. So I'll do this last one and just show you how I press this closed flat so that it's um, not the sour cream one. And you can, you know what, if you have bigger things that you want to put in there, you can make your paper cut it at six by six and then you get a nice bigger um, container and it's a little wider, a little taller, so I had actually taken a bunch of paper and just cut it in all different sizes. If you use cardstock, you can do them five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's totally your, your choice as to what it is you want to use if you're looking for a specific thing. But I know I have quite a few packs of paper over here, and I love using it because I don't want it to sit on my shelf like a shrine. I want to use it. It's not a shrine, it's paper, and paper must be used, besides of my scrapbooks. <laughs> so again, we're going to do the same thing where we're just going to fold it over. I made my tape down as a C, it was an upside down C, and then I'm going to simply overlap it, get my thumb out of the way, and then, whoa, my finger's stuck, and then just... Thank you, Carol. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. So on this, again, I like to take my seam and kind of push it off to the side there. And then just press this together. Make sure you put that down. And then, you know what? I may as well put something in here because I can't have an empty pocket. Can you hear me dumping out all my coins? So let's go ahead and put some coins in. Where's a green one? There's a green one. Oh, I must have eaten most of the green ones. I mean, they must not have given me that many green ones. 
Ha ha ha. So again, if you want it as a sour cream, just twist it and, and tape it down that way. But if you want to do it like I did for the dog treats, all you're going to do is just press it without having that little twist. And how sweet is that? Same, you know, same thing. It's just a fun little container. And my chocolates are up there. So thank you guys for joining me. I was so excited to, to come up with some fun ideas. That cooking, what's cooking stamp set is bundle is just adorable for your favorite chef. I know all these cooking shows are very, very popular right now. And everybody seems to have their favorite shows and favorite chefs. And I know we all have favorite ones at home as well. So let me tell you the name of that punch, and then I will say goodbye for today. It's called Label Me Lovely. Label Me Lovely Punch. And that's what I used to decorate on my little doggy treats. I couldn't remember the name of it. Thanks for joining me. I will be here next Wednesday. I plan to um, have another fun holiday idea for you so that we can kick off Thanksgiving. Um, let me know what your favorite Thanksgiving treat is or food. Like, are you a stuffing lover? Do you love the turkey? Thanks, Sandy. That was sweet. Um, personally, I love the stuffing and usually the bread, but that's because I'm a carb, a carb girl. <laughs> And I do love the turkey. Um, but anyways, you guys, thank you again. Enjoy. I hope you can come up and create some of your own fun calendar, countdown calendars, advent calendars, and really, really enjoy making these. Put on some Christmas music like I did when I was creating all of these and have a ton of fun. Oh, lastly, I forgot to show you guys. I did use our dies that are the um, playful alphabet, and that's where I got our numbers. They're the perfect size. And again, I use these with the adhesive sheets. So I forgot to give a shout out to that. Have a great week. I will see you next Wednesday for at 411 for some more Stampin' Fun. So have a great week, and we'll see you then. Thanks. Thanks, Penny. Happy to share. Have a good one. Bye, everyone.